today. Um, um, I want to move on to the money, please. Uh, and the, the starting point is our legal obligation if we leave without a deal. Do you broadly accept, or does the government broadly accept, the conclusions of the House of Lords report of the 4th of March this year, entitled Brexit and the EU Budget? Which, which said it was sort of undecided, really. No, it didn't. No, well, it, 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 it set out that if we left without a deal under Article 50, hmm. we had no legal obligation yeah. under EU international or UK law to we, pay I think anything. no is just a step too far. No uh, obligation. Um, I'm not going to share with you, as governments never do, the, the legal advice they're given, but let me, let me outline for you the approach we took. It might, might sort of inform the answer rather more thoroughly than, than just me giving you a yes or no on that. Um, what the, what the um, Commission did was put a proposal to us. It was pretty high level, by the way. It wasn't quite as detailed as I think people suspect. A pretty high level proposal, but it was a kitchen sink proposal. It took in every liability every conceivable liability, including things like contingent liabilities, uh, didn't take in any assets, um, even when you're looking at the EIB, took the liabilities and not the assets, um, and uh, present that to us. We went through it, and basically we felt that they were on poor to non-existent ground under both Article 50 and Article 70 of the Vienna Protocol. Those are the two primary tests. We also thought the approach on things like ignoring assets was just um, illogical in some respects. So, so that was why uh, I can't remember it was the third. I think it was the fourth. The fourth round of negotiations. There was a pretty frosty write-up everywhere um, because it was one of those ones where Mr. Barnier was not very happy. Um, uh, and and we took we took a view which is this is not. Um, we took from the beginning, from the beginning, from my very first meeting with him. We took the view that this is not an issue of legal responsibilities. It's an issue of political, moral, maybe, uh, operational responsibilities. But you, know, you pick your words, and uh, different people put it differently, um, but not legal. So if the thrust of your argument is right, but the, the, uh, the, uh, it's little. And, and what, we, what, the, what, the, what the argument tended to show, the legal argument tended to show, was <coughs> we might be on the hook for one year, basically. One year, not, not five, ten years, whatever. This was basically what the House of Lords report said. It said there may be a moral obligation to pay, but there was no legal one That's because right. Article right. 50 of the treaty knocks out uh, the Vienna Convention's yeah. um, alternative provisions. Yeah. <clears throat> but doesn't this become very important in the event that we leave without a deal? Because then, is the Prime Minister's commitment to pay under the multi-annual financial framework an unconditional one, or is it conditional on an agreement? Well, we're, 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 we've not got into the speculative outcomes of no deal. I mean, let, let me just say why for a second. Um, <clears throat> much of the arguments about deal, no deal uh, are, are, are phrased in polemical rather than logical arguments. The, the, the phrase is crash out and all this sort of thing. The various sorts of no deal. Um, there's a no deal which is we go to WTO arrangements, but we have a bare bones deal on, on other elements. Avia as I, saw, I listed them, I think, to, to, to the chairman. Aviation, um, uh, data, nuclear, maybe, or not, and so on. Um, uh, and then there's, of course, there's a complete failure to agree and sort of hostile. Now, I think that is so incredible, it's actually off the probability scale. But, but that in, in those circumstances, it is conceivable you know, that, the, that there'll be no deal of any sort. You know, um, and if there is, we pay nothing. And uh, under those circumstances, you could, you could imagine the, the, the country paying nothing. And this is our strongest negotiating card, isn't it? Because the multi-annual financial framework needs the £20 billion uh, over the next two years to make it work. Otherwise, somebody has to pay more. Or people I, would, I wouldn't put it in such crude terms. And I'm sure it's on the mind of some continental countries. Mm -hmm. They're aware, they're, they're, they're aware of it. Um, you, you made a statement saying that the days of making vast yearly contributions to the EU budget will end when we leave, but that will be when the transition period ends. I'm, not exclu I'm excluding from that what the, what the um, um, uh, Commission delightfully calls the divorce bill. But, you know, there would not be a continuous uh, future payment for access to the market, for example. Right, but there may, be, what I had in mind. There may be contributions to individual projects Absolutely. beyond, Absolutely. beyond yeah. that. Yeah, I'm, I think it's quite likely so long as we are still friends, which is where I expect we will be, um, are quite likely that we will be taking part in things like Horizon 2020, some of the other um, 
space uh, uh, issues like the, the GPS system, um, some of the nuclear uh, thing, the, the variety of things where I can see as continuing to be part, just as, I don't know, Israel is part of some of them. And, and what, what about loans to the Ukraine and things like that? Well, that's a, that's a separate issue, I think. I mean, I, I think in, in, in those terms, I mean, I, I sort of slightly need to notice that question, but my, my instinctive reaction to that uh, is that uh, that will be a sort of a discretionary decision thereafter. That will be one of our foreign policy decisions. And bear in mind, I mean, one of the things that we are looking towards is a you know, deep and special partnership includes a warm and close relationship on foreign policy thereafter. We think, you know, we view Europe as our, will be our nearest and largest ally, effectively. Uh, but not sincere cooperation. Sorry? Not sincere cooperation. So the UK would not expect to find no, itself... No, 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 I don't know. Sincere cooperation stops when we leave. When we leave. And that stops when we leave rather than at the end of the implementation. Yeah. Um, on the uh, sequencing of agreements, you set out that we would get a deal under Article 50, and then there would be, and that's an um, enhanced qualified majority vote and the European <coughs> Parliament's yeah. approval. There are then the JHA and trade issues. Uh, which, assuming they are mixed agreements, require more complex yeah. ratification procedures. But do we fulfil our obligations under the Article 50 agreement before they have fulfilled their side on the other parts? Or does our commitment under Article 50 to pay money, for example, become contingent on those agreements being ratified? The, uh, nothing is agreed till everything is agreed is, uh, is the famous favourite phrase of the European Union and we think it applies both ways. So are you saying that we would suspend payments during the implementation period until an agreement on JHA and trade has been... This is about as far down this speculative route as I'm going to follow you. But it's, 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 it's very important because um, if there is a sequencing in the agreements it is perfectly possible that it would take more than two years to ratify the trade deal. Um, it may be possible to continue with it pending ratification, but that in that two-year period we would have paid over £20 billion and we may not have the trade deal. This seems to me that's very important. This is one of the reasons we need, <coughs> we need agreement uh, at least at council level and commission level before it starts. But doesn't it go back but, to... But not necessarily ratification. No. Okay, because... <coughs> there's an element of risk in it. I, I there's that. an element of risk, but can you reduce that risk? by making it clear that the British government will not, during the implementation or transition period, make payments um, until those ratifications are done. That's why I said I'm not following you down this route any further. <laughs> <coughs> All right, because it is, it is it, the, the, the worry is... I can see what you're saying. You can see what I'm saying. The, 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 I'm, the, conscious, I'm conscious of the trade-offs. The, the worry is, to follow on from Mr Bain's question, is that we get to um, 29th March 2019, we stay under the auspices of the European Court. We're still in the customs union. We accept uh, new rules as they come through. We keep on paying money with the promise of a trade deal on the never never. We are still therefore in the European Union for a further two years. And all that's happened is the end point has been delayed uh, and the uh, uncertainty in 2021, which the aim is to avoid, is just as great. But we've actually stayed in the European Union for two years um, longer and not achieved what we're aiming for. I think, I think there are ways around that, but if you forgive me, I'm not going to detail them here today. All right. Thank you, Chairman. You the sums that I have seen that they propose to uh, demand from this country seem to me to be extortionate, and I think to go whistle is, is an entirely appropriate expression. Boris Johnson is legally correct. And there's a very good report by the uh, House of Lords European Scrutiny Committee, which set out that if we leave... Um, without a deal, under EU, international and UK law, we owe no money. And that's a very good starting point. So for without a deal? Is without it? a deal, that's right. So then you're saying, what is it in our interest to pay to get certain other elements that we want? But their starting negotiation position from the EU point of view is they have no legal basis for demanding these payments. No, but they're saying that, they're is, saying, that is the gateway to getting a deal, and, uh, and you want a deal, uh, they're you, saying, or would you like no They're deal? saying a moral obligation, but a moral obligation ranks mm. for less than a legal No, but they're obligation. also saying that's how we can part as friends. I mean, um, what, what's um, your personal uh, view? Uh, I, I mean, we I, have entered into obligations, haven't we? Uh, the obligations cease on the day we leave the European Union. That's completely clear. 
Even um, for programmes which are continuing to If run. we want to maintain part of specific programmes, that's clearly different. The Erasmus programme, the Horizon 2020 programme, I have no difficulty with us continuing to contribute to those. There is then a negotiation on what Brexit looks like and if money oils the wheels, we have it, they want it, but we should make sure we get a great deal in return for that.